This ain't your ordinary football show. It's the Old Dominion Football Show with Bruce Rader and Coach Bobby Wilder. Brought to you by Priority Automotive. Nobody said it was going to be easy. The transition year as Old Dominion moves up from the NCAA FCS level to the higher FBS level. The week one loss at East Carolina was followed Saturday by a 37 point loss at Maryland. Old Dominion's first ever game against an ACC team. Could anything positive have come from that? And how happy are the Monarchs finally to be able to play at home tomorrow? Let's find out. The Old Dominion football show starts now. I'm Bruce Rader along with head coach Bobby Wilder. Coach, let's begin with that question. Were you able to walk away from that Maryland game with anything positive? Yeah, there's, there's not a lot that comes from losing uh, as badly as we did in that game, Bruce, but the one thing I'll speak to is the fact that of the 70 players that traveled to Maryland, 55 of those players played in this game. So we've now had 29 players on defense that have played, 23 on offense, and three of our specialists. That's, that's 55 players gaining experience. 27 of those players, Bruce, are first-year players to the program. So although we're 0-2 and they haven't tasted a victory, what we're gaining is gain, game experience. Ah, but that taste could come this week. Now, the move up to the FBS level was unexpected. The majority of your players, as you mentioned, were mm -hmm. recruited to play at a high level in mm -hmm. the Colonial Conference, but that right. all changed almost overnight. These mm -hmm. kids have been put in a tough situation. They've been put in a very challenging situation, but I feel like, Bruce, the Colonial Athletic Association, I've said this a number of times, I think it's the best conference in FCS football, so we've been prepared to be able to play good football teams. Now, the biggest challenge for us, Bruce, is out of the 96 players on our roster, 49 of them are brand new to our program since January. 49 of them weren't with us last year when we were going 11 and two. So we've got a mix right now of players that have had experience in one and players that are brand new to the program and haven't tasted success. What we're trying to do now is develop an identity as a football team. Tomorrow, though, you finally get to play at home. Finally. This is a Howard team <laughs> from the MEAC that right. has a, well, a better record than you guys do right now, mm -hmm. but they did not have to play two tough Division I teams to start the season. Yeah, what I've talked to our team about, Bruce, is the fact that th this is more about Old Dominion right now than any opponent that we would be playing and developing our identity, developing who we are as a football team. You mentioned Howard. Howard was 7-4 and four last year. Good football team. They're 1-1 one and one this year. Uh, but we've got to find out who we are as a football team in Old Dominion, and coming back home is critical for us right now. Now, of course, we know the game tomorrow is going to be sold out. Mm -hmm. How happy are you with the way that your fans supported the team during those first two road games? Oh, I, I couldn't be any more pleased, Bruce, nor could our, our team, the players, from the 5,000 people at East Carolina that traveled, Bruce. And it felt like there were 3,000 people last week at Maryland. We're in a situation, Bruce. Last week at Maryland, we're, we're down at the end of the game. and We're not going to win the football game. We've got our backup ones in to gain experience. We score a touchdown, and I'm hearing ODU chants coming over my shoulder. It, it, just such a good feeling. And as I shared with our players this week, the 12th Monarchs are there for us. They've always been there for us. We're so excited to get back with them Saturday night. Let's talk about your players, though. How about those guys? I'm sure that they were shocked mm -hmm. Saturday night on that yeah. bus ride home. How did they bounce back this week, or did mm -hmm. they? Great question. <laughs> Shocked, uh, disappointed, confidence uh, was, was definitely affected from that game, Bruce. And, and what I've said to our players and said to everybody within our organization, we need to stick to the plan. We have a blueprint for success. What we've done works as a football program. We're just taking a big step right now. And there's some growing pains when you take this step, especially when you do it with half of your football team being brand new. So the biggest thing I've tried to work on this week, Bruce, is their confidence level to remind them they're good football players. We're back home. Let's go out there and show everybody what we're capable of. When they run out onto the field at SB Ballard Stadium tomorrow, I can tell you they're going to have a different mindset. <laughs> they sure are. Now, we know the defense has struggled, but big changes in the coaching staff this offseason is expected to result in better results in the future. Now, tonight, Chris Reckling visits with one of the new Monarch coaches who came to Norfolk with a pretty impressive resume. That in itself is going to open up that gap a little bit for Dom to get through. You know? ODU defensive line coach Jeff Comision is giving a little one-on-one -on -one coaching advice to defensive lineman Malik Gomes. Comision is a player's coach, but is not afraid to rule with a little tough love. When you're coaching, you know, college football, it ain't always just about football. Yeah, it's about winning games, but there's a lot of other things going into their development, you know, in regards, you know, their social life, you know, things 
things in their private lives. That tough love approach was formed as a young man, where he was one of 14 kids growing up. And yes, that included nine sisters. You always let the girls do what they had to do. Maybe we figured that out a little early. Let the girls do what they had to do because women are vicious. <laughs> so. Comision spent the last six years coaching at Boston College, but started his coaching career at Maine, where he met Bobby Wilder. What started as a career in law ended up on the sidelines coaching football. I went to college to become a lawyer, became a football coach instead. I don't know exactly how that happened, where you know I, I lost my way, but you know I've enjoyed myself. <laughs> As for that unusual last name, it's something he's had to explain his entire life. It's funny because I have a, one of my best friends in the world, I think he pronounced it right once, and since then he's called me Jeff Come Sing a Song. So most people just call me Kamish. It's a whole lot easier to deal with. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. The addition of Kamish and new defensive coordinator, Rich Nagy, were probably, Coach, your mm -hmm. most important recruits <laughs> of this offseason. Yeah, what, what you're talking about, Bruce, and those two guys is number one, quality people, very good football coaches. They care about the kids on and off the field, and they've both, Bruce, been successful at the FBS level, which is where we're going, so couldn't be any more happy with Coach Kamish. All right, still to come, kicker Jared Brown's big leg is given. ODU good field position this year, but is he strong enough to make it through the <laughs> one-minute drill? Oh, boy. Plus, Coach Wilder gives us his priorities of the game for tomorrow's home opener against Cal. All right, Coach, time for your favorite segment, the one-minute <laughs> drill. And this week, Nathan Epstein is joined by the kicker from Grafton High School with the powerful leg, Jared Brown. Back here with the one minute drill, this time with kicker Jared Brown. So Jared, kickers usually take a lot of slack on the team. What's the worst thing that your teammates have ever done to you, whether it's something they said or something they did? Uh, there's a lot, honestly. We're kickers, so they just do it all the time. They just mess with us all the time because we don't, we don't do as much in practice. We, we, we kind of just do our own thing on the side. What kind of stuff do you ever do to egg your teammates on just to be, kind of get back at them? Um, I told Rob Mahan that I had more tackles than him one time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but that was when he was a red shirt, so he hadn't even played yet. What is the one song that you need to listen to to get pumped up? Probably Lose Yourself by Eminem. I know I'm going to get a lot of crap from the team from that, but whatever. You kind of look like him with that hair, but... <laughs> that's, that's why I said I might get something from the team for that one, but uh, that's all right, whatever. What's your best impression of somebody on the team? I, I guess I would have to say Coach D, but I can't do it here. Yeah, you can. I can. <laughs> um, uh, Coach D, when he gets mad, he just he kind of rambles a lot, so it kind of sounds like, I don't, know, I, don't know, I, don't, I don't know what we're doing here. We hear that there is a Bobby Wilder impression, so if you could give us that. Uh, I think Coach Wilder says a lot. He'll see you and say, hey, Andre, happy birthday. It's the first day of the rest of your life. See you later. I think that's good enough for now. <laughs> you passed the one-minute drill. Well Thank done. You. Thank you. All right, Coach, how do you uh, grade Jared's impressions and his ability to kick it to a win? Well, first of all, a very good kicker. Um, I'll, I'll talk to him after this tomorrow. We'll see about that. But happy birthday to you. It's the first day of the rest of your life. That's right. Thank you very much, Coach. Still to come, Coach Wilder answers your questions in the Coach's Corner. That's next. All right, Coach, time to turn it over to the 12th Monarch. It's time for another edition of the Coach's Corner. And Coach, first question, we got this one off of our Facebook page, and it comes from Brandon in Windsor, who asks, Coach Wilder, do you feel like your team is prepared mentally and physically to face teams this year that they haven't faced before? Explain that. Yeah, that's a great question by Brandon. Basically, in this situation, it we're, we're a work in progress, Bruce, as I, as I keep talking about 49 of our 96 are brand new. So trying to get them mentally prepared and, and keeping their confidence, Bruce, and then physically, that's a combination of on the field and in the weight room to step up to this level. Great question, Brandon. All right, next question is from Bill from Newport News who asks, do you think that that Chip Kelly no huddle offense mm -hmm. has staying power in the NFL? Wow, what, what an exciting game to watch the other night, Bruce. We've got the Redskins and the Eagles, and, and to see the offense and see the pace, the way we'll know, Bruce, if that offense is going to sustain 
is if the quarterback can stay healthy. Keep in mind, they rushed for 263 yards the other night. That's clearly the best total in the NFL, but the quarterback's got to stay healthy. Good question. That offense is a lot like yours. It, it, it is, Bruce. And to that, the point you and I always talk about, trying to keep Taylor Heineke healthy. That's critical, and it's going to be critical for the Eagles with Michael Vick. If he stays healthy, they're a dangerous football team. You hear that, Taylor? Final question, <laughs> Hank from Chesapeake, and it's a short one. Sure. What do you prefer, natural grass or field turf? Yeah, I've been, been on both, Bruce, in my 26 years of coaching. Personally now, with the style of, of football that we play, I prefer the turf because you get a consistent surface, whether it's rain, uh, whether it's dry, you don't deal in mud, the field stays consistent. I think it's better for the fans, too, that they get to watch a consistent surface for their football team. Good question. Thank you. Because they were Division One schools, we knew a lot about East Carolina and Maryland before you right. played them. The fans don't really know that much about Howard. What mm -hmm. type of team mm -hmm. will the fans be seeing tomorrow? Yeah, Howard. Howard's an exciting football team, Bruce. What we're going to see is another really good quarterback. The, the first two weeks at East Carolina, Maryland, good quarterback. This young man, McGee, is throwing for about 215 per game yardage. He's rushing Bruce for about 80 yards a game. Dual threat guy. So how we handle the quarterback is going to be critical. Defensively, Bruce, they're going to play a lot of man coverage. So our receivers are going to be challenged similar to the way they were challenged last week at Maryland. We'll learn a lot about ourselves this week. Do you have to calm the guys down a bit, mm -hmm. knowing that they're going to be running out on the home field, the fans are going to be going crazy, they've yeah. have, had two losses, a, right. how do you handle that? Yeah, that's, that's a really good point you bring up, Bruce. The, the biggest thing is for our defense to get used to the fact, are you listening, 12 Monarchs? To get used to the fact that when we're on defense, they can't hear. Everything has to be a hand signal. When we were on the road at East Carolina, Maryland, the crowd was quiet when we were on defense. Now the crowd's going to be loud. And you know, Bruce, you've been to our games. It's deafening. You can't hear. So we've really got to be good with the hand signals. That's the biggest difference. All right, Coach, real quick. The fifth home opener for the Old Dominion Monarchs. What are the priorities of the game against Howard tomorrow? Well, number one thing we've got to do is get the 12th Monarchs in the game early and often. Get their excitement level so our kids feel their energy. Number two, we've got to win the turnover battle. We have not won the turnover battle either against East Carolina or Maryland. Time to win it tomorrow. And then number three, control the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. It's going to be critical. We have some success with our offensive and defensive lines. So the Monarchs return to the friendly confines of SB Ballard Stadium tomorrow for their game against Howard. And you know Mr. Ballard is probably already <laughs> setting up his tailgate even tonight. Kickoff is at 6 o'clock and all of you fans are encouraged to wear white. Coach, it's a whiteout. Like, it's a whiteout. You oh. like those 6 o'clock starts? I love them. I think it's great. Our players absolutely love them. It gives the fans, Bruce, a chance to show up, tailgate, have a good time. Can't wait to see everybody tomorrow night. And can't wait for a win. That does it for us. Join us every night at 1045 here on Fox 43 for the Old Dominion Football Show. And we'll see you tomorrow at the game. Hey, 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 hey.